Rice is boring. There, I said it. But we can fix that. Furikake exists and is a wonderful thing to have. My name is Willow and this is Yumi Bento. Let's make lunch. So we're starting off with toasting our Szechuan peppercorns, also called prickly ash. They're sold in bulk at most Asian stores. So while those are toasting, I figured we'd do a little history lesson because I found this really interesting. What we call rice seasoning or furikake is actually not that old. It began in the Taisho era between 1912 and 1926. A lack of calcium in the average Japanese diet was a cause for concern for a pharmacist in the Kumamoto prefecture. Tsukichi Yoshiyamaru was having none of this and developed a food supplement of fish bones, seaweed, and sesame seeds crushed up. This powder of health was called Gohan no Tomo and is translated to a friend for rice. It may sound a bit iffy, but when you're suffering calcium deficiency, things look a little different. Keep moving those peppercorns around or they will burn. This food item was largely unchanged until a number of years later, a date I could not find, when a grocer from Fukushima City named Saichiro Kai developed a mix including white croaker and kombu, among other things, simmered in a soy sauce broth and called it kore wa umai, which translates to this is tasty, inventive. Presumably variants existed in this time. The seasoning was widely distributed to soldiers during both world wars as a long lasting food additive when fresh meat, fruit, and vegetables are in short supply. Following World War II in 1948, Nissin Foods started producing the supplement to combat the major issue of malnourishment Japan was experiencing at the time. It was a vital source of protein and calcium while the country was getting back on its feet. So here, as you see, there is a little bit of smoke happening. That's okay, keep your heat to medium low, no higher. You'll start to see little spots, little shiny spots in the pan. They'll show up right about there. And that means your peppercorns are done. While our pan's hot, we might as well toast our sesame seeds. Yours might already be toasted, mine weren't. So check your package and toast away. Let's continue with our history lesson. In 1959, the term furikake, as we know it, was popularized with the formation of the National Furikake Organization. In 1960, furikake was breaking out of its adult health food reputation and marketing to children with fun individual packaging and the inclusion of stickers, cartoon images, and even toys. This seasoning that we take so lightly and is in every Japanese kitchen has come such a long way and it just was really interesting to look into the history of it. Now through this, you've seen the sesame seeds go from a really light blonde color to, you see some of them are starting to get nice and golden brown. You don't want them to go too far because they will continue to cook with the oil content they have. So we're gonna start with grinding up some of those peppercorns that we just toasted. I use a mortar and pestle. A lot of people use a coffee grinder. There's no right or wrong way. We're gonna grind those up fairly fine. You don't really want big chunks of these. They tend to uh, not taste very good in that way. So with that, we're gonna throw in some salt and Korean chili flake with a little bit of white pepper. All these things are very affordable and easy to find provided you can find an Asian grocer. Next up, we're doing nori, salt, and sugar. The ratios are there on screen. And for this one, I started off with food processor thinking that, hey, everybody else does it, should work, right? No, no, I, I, I know better. So regardless of how you do it, you're gonna need to tear it into sheets or crumple it in your hands or a baggie. 
and put everything into the food processor or mortar and pestle and grind them all up until they're the texture that you want. There's nothing saying you have to have big flakes, small flakes, whatever. It, get, it gets mixed into your rice, so if you like it in a way that other people don't, it's your rice. Do what you want. This recipe is the most traditional that I typically use, bonito, nori, and salt. All that's getting ground up in my big boy mortar and pestle until it's the texture that I prefer it. Bonito can be hard to source, but it's definitely worth getting some, even if you're not going to use it for every single fish stock you make or every little thing that calls for it. There are granulated soup stocks that are based on bonito that are much more easily available. This last one is a personal favorite of mine now that I've gotten the recipe right where I want it. Walnuts may seem an odd addition, but trust me when I say nuts can really go very well with plain rice. I mean, think about how well sesame seeds go. Anyway, there are a ton of other ways to season your rice that I haven't covered, including plain salt, rice vinegar, pickled daikon, pickled ginger, any form of pickled plum, paste, vinegar, etc. You'll notice a trend towards pickles because the acid and the salt really make plain rice into something special. Regardless of what a recipe might say, if there's something that you want or feel that you would like on your rice, try it out. There's nothing to lose there. And who knows, maybe you'll discover something great. I hope this helps with the boring rice problem. Let me know your favorite down in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.